Hello everyone, this is Sona, second year MBBS from Thago Medical College. So the topic which we're going to see today is portal vein, which is an important essay question in abdomen. Let's get into the topic. So today's objectives are features of portal vein, how is it formed, its cores and branches, its parts and relation, its tributaries, and the portocaval anastomosis, which plays an important role in the clinical part. So first, what is portal system? In order to know detail in a detailed manner about the portal uh, system or portal vein, we have to know some understanding about this portal system. So what is this portal system? Okay. So this portal system, blood is collected from one set of capillaries and it passes through a large vessel to another set of capillaries before returning to the systemic circulation. So in simpler words, let's say that uh, blood transfer begins and ends in capillaries before reaching the heart. Okay, so this is a slight deviation from the normal blood flow. Then what's the cause of normal blood flow? Normally, a blood flows through the artery, arterioles to the capillaries and then from the capillaries it flows through the venules and ends in the veins right but here the blood flows from the capillaries to another set of capillaries through a large vessel okay so where are these portal system present in our body the first one is hepatic portal system which is our topic today and what are the other things we have the hypophyseal portal system uh, we have the renal portal system. We also have portal system in the placenta. So here is the example of the uh, hepatic portal system. See, the blood flow begins from capillaries. It passes through this portal vein and ends in the capillaries in the liver. Okay. Okay. Now, into our today's topic. What is portal vein? So this portal vein is an important venous channel or a blood vessel that delivers the blood to the liver from the stomach, intestine, spleen, and the pancreas, okay? So most of the liver's blood supply is by this portal vein and not the hepatic artery, okay? So let's see this. I mean, let's uh, make some uh, sense to this definition. So see, blood flows from the uh, stomach, intestine, intestine from intestine, we have the inferior and superior mesentery, from the spleen, from the pancreas to the liver. See the direction of the blood flow from here to the liver. Okay. So we have some features of the portal vein. Okay. So what are those important features? So this portal vein provides about the 80% of the blood flow, blood that flows through the liver, okay? So about 80% of the blood that flows in our body is via this portal vein. Next thing, the tributaries and branches of this portal vein holds up to one third of the total volume of blood in our body, okay? So in our entire body, one third of the blood, one third volume of our blood is present in this portal vein, its tributaries and its branches, okay? So the next thing, what we saw earlier, the sense, okay, the definition, okay? Uh, so it transports the products of digestion of carbohydrates, proteins and other nutrients from the intestine. So our nutrients or diet products or products of these digestion are transported from the intestine. We also have the products of RBC destruction. From where, what is the graveyard of RBC? It's the spleen, right? So the products of RBC destruction from the spleen also reaches via the, uh, reaches the liver via this portal vein, okay? Okay, so this portal vein is devoid of valves, okay? So this is an important point here. The next thing is, uh, this portal vein divides into branches, which is a very similar course to that of the hepatic artery. So it discharge their contents into the sinusoids of the liver. So from which the hepatic veins drain these blood uh, into the uh, inferior vena cava. 
and from the inferior vena cava to the right atrium. So what's this point here? This portal vein begins like vein from the capillary bed of the gut or the stomach or the intestine and it terminates like an artery in the hepatic sinusoids. So this point is nothing but the total summary of the points which we saw earlier. So now what's the difference between the portal vein and hepatic vein? So portal vein, as we saw now, it uh, transports the blood and nutrients from the stomach, spleen, intestine and gallbladder to the liver. What is hepatic vein then? See here, this, this is the hepatic vein. Right. So what's the function of this hepatic vein? The hepatic vein carries the deoxygenated blood from the liver to the right atrium via this inferior vena cava. Okay. Now let's see the formation of the portal vein. So here, this point uh, corresponds to the formation of the portal vein. What do we have here? We will have the neck of the pancreas. Yeah, it's being removed here. So what vertebrae level does it correspond to? It corresponds to L2 vertebra. Okay, so what are its formation, formation, uh, formation tributaries? It's the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein. Yeah, so the portal vein is formed at the level of L2 behind the neck of the pancreas by the union of splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein. Moving on to its course and the branches. So here we have the formation of portal vein. See, the formation occurs behind the neck of the pancreas. So here, what we have here would be the first part of pyornum. Okay, so this portal vein, see, when it is formed after its formation, it runs upward and to its right, right? Behind the neck of the pancreas. Yeah, we have one relation over here. What's the next one? It also runs posterior or behind to the first part of duodenum, which is being removed here. And then it enters into the, uh, I mean, uh, it enters into the, uh, via the free edge of the lesser omentum, okay? Which will connect the liver or the porta hepatis to the uh, lesser curvature of the stomach. So it enters via that to the porta hepatis, okay? At the porta hepatis, this portal vein divides into right and the left branch. So as we can see here, the right branch is wider, okay? And the left branch will be narrower. Okay, so why is it okay? And the and another point here is that the, the right branch will be smaller and the left branch will be uh, longer because we have major parts like uh, quadric lobe and quadric lobe in the left part, right? So in order to supply those parts and the longer left lobe, the left uh, branch of the portal vein is longer. Okay. The next, okay, we have completed with the course and the branches. So its branches are nothing but the right and the left, uh, left branches, okay? Now, we'll see the parts and the relation. So uh, with the duodenum as a reference, uh, that is the first part of duodenum as a reference, we are dividing this portal vein into three parts, okay? So uh, the formation of portal vein occurs here, right? So what is its location corresponding to the duodenum? It is inferior to the first part of duodenum. So it's called the infraduodenal part. So what is this part then? Anything behind something or anything behind the corresponding part which we are mentioning is called retro, okay? So this part being behind or uh, posterior to the duodenum, duodenum, it's called the retro duodenal part. Okay, uh, what is this part then? This part uh, being superior to the duodenum, it's called the supraduodenal part. Okay, what lies behind this portal vein? We have the course of inferior vena cava behind this portal vein. So the posterior relation at all these three parts would be the inferior vena cava. Now, uh, we'll move on into the uh, anterior relation of these three different parts. So here, the infradiurnal part, as we can see here, the anterior relation would be the neck of the pancreas. Then what do we have here at the retrodiurnal part? We have the first part of duodenum. Added to that, we also have the gastrodiurnal artery, which supplies the duodenum and the stomach. We also have the bile duct, okay? 
so uh, the anterior relation of the supradiurnal part will be the hepatic artery and the bile duct okay now we will move on into the tributaries so first what are the formation on uh, forming tributaries it is the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein what uh, what else i mean what are the other tributaries other than these formation tributaries we have the superior pan pancreatic or duodenal vein we also have the uh, right gastric and the left gastric vein which supplies the uh, lesser curvature part of the stomach we also have the para umbilical and the cystic vein as we can see here the cystic vein drains or it is the tributary or uh, sorry it drains into the right branch of the portal vein whereas the para umbilical vein drains into the left branch of the portal vein so this sums up the main tributaries of the portal vein next this diagram shows us uh, the tributaries of the superior mesenteric vein we have the right colic vein jejunal and ileal veins and the ileocolic veins here okay so now uh, onto the most important point portocaval anastomosis now what is this portocaval anastomosis let's break this word now uh, portocaval can be break into portal and caval so portal denotes the portal system and caval denotes the uh, caval system or here we can say inferior vena cava so inferior vena cava means it is the systemic supply or systemic vein right so the anastomosis between this portal vein and the caval system or the systemic vein is called the portocaval anastomosis so the other name for this is also the other name is also known as porto systemic anastomosis so we have many sites uh, where this portocaval anastomosis occur uh, but what's the importance of this portocaval anastomosis this portocaval anastomosis serves as a route of collateral circulation in case of portal obstruction so when does this portal obstruction occur and what is this portal obstruction portal obstruction occurs uh, due to some adjacent tumor compressions over the portal veins okay or uh it's also uh, maybe due to the narrowing of the portal vein by the blood clots which is the most common cause okay uh the next thing we are going to see the important sites of the portocaval anastomosis umbilicus the lower end of the esophagus anal canal extra peritoneal surface of the retra peritoneal uh, organs and the bare area of the liver so of these five the first three are the major parts of the portocaval anastomosis and we have many clinical uh, correlations corresponding to these three parts so now let's see the portocaval anastomosis the first site it occurs at the umbilicus so uh, what are the veins that uh, undergoes anastomosis over the umbilicus so here we have the para umbilical vein that uh, that is a tributary of the uh left branch of the portal vein right uh, what does it anastomose with it anastomoses with the superficial veins of the anterior abdominal wall okay uh, so it anastomose over the umbilicus around the umbilicus okay the next thing what do we have we uh, have the anastomosis at the lower end of the esophagus okay so from the portal system we have the esophageal branch of the left gastric vein okay so the left gastric vein which drains into the portal vein uh, then uh, what's the part or corresponding part of the caval system then we have the esophageal tributary of the accessory hemiazygous vein okay so these both anastomose over the upper end or sorry lower end of the esophagus so what's next then we have the anastomosis occurring at the anal canal okay uh, okay what are the uh, veins that undergo anastomosis here from the portal system we have the superior rectal vein we have middle rectal and inferior rectal vein from the uh, caval system which are a branch of the uh, internal sorry um, yeah which are a branch of the internal iliac vein okay which uh, the anastomosis occur at the level of anal canal the next thing 
extra peritoneal surface of the retro peritoneal organs so veins of the retro peritoneal organs so the organs that are behind the peritoneum what are they the duodenum the ascending colon and the descending colon they correspond the veins of these organs correspond to the portal system see colic uh, which corresponds to the uh, colon and uh, okay so these are the veins of the portal system and what are the veins of the systemic system then we have the renal vein right which is uh, which is a uh, tributary of the caval system or the inferior vena cava so these both anastomoses are the extra peritoneal surface of the retro peritoneal organs then uh, what's the last side then we have the bad area of the liver okay so what are the veins that undergo anastomosis of this bare area of the liver we have the hepatic venules okay which is a branch or sorry which is a tributary of the portal system and the phrenic and intercostal veins which are the branch of the systemic or the caval system that undergo anastomosis of the bare area of the liver so now we we'll get on into the clinical topics so here this diagram shows the anastomosis see the level of umbilicus um at the rectum sorry at the anal canal uh, retroperitoneal surface uh, lower end of the esophagus yeah now the first thing is the portal obstruction as we saw earlier portal obstruction is due to the narrowing of the portal vein by the blood clot okay uh, the first uh, clinical condition here is the caput medici so what is caput medici so when the uh, portal obstruction occurs at the superficial veins that are surrounding the umbilicus the superficial veins become distended and very tortuous okay so that uh, so how does it appear it appears very distended and tortuous like snakes okay so that condition is called caput medici why is it called caput medici medici is a monster woman figure okay uh, so her ha uh, hair was made up of snakes so the when the obstruction occurs at the umbilicus or the portocaval uh, anastom uh, obstruction occurs at the level of umbilicus the superficial veins around this umbilicus appear like tortuous snakes okay so we have that from here so see it appears like the tortuous snake and this is medusa whose hair was made of snakes so it's almost similar to that right so we call this condition as caput medici okay the next thing is hematemesis okay um what is hematemesis let's break this word emesis is vomiting hema means blood is involved so hematemesis means vomiting of blood why does this occur when portal obstruction occurs in case of liver cirrhosis the collateral channels of at the lower end of the esophagus they become very distended and tortuous okay so they result in the formation of esophageal varices so when these esophageal varices rupture they cause hematemesis or vomiting of blood sometimes death may also occur at this condition the next condition what we are going to see are hemorrhoids hemorrhoids is nothing but passing of blood by other stools okay uh okay this occurs when the portal uh, hypertension or the uh, obstruction occurs at the level of anal canal okay uh, the next thing is the portal hypertension so what is portal hypertension the pressure within the portal vein when it increases it's called portal hypertension so what is the normal pressure at the uh, level at, in the portal vein it's around 40 mm of mercury so uh, sorry uh, it's around 5 to 15 mm of mercury when the uh, okay at what pressure we say that as portal hypertension is around 40 mm of mercury so what happens at this condition the uh, portal vein uh, becomes and i mean uh, the pressure increases right so why is it cause the main cause of this portal hypertension would be the alcoholic cirrhosis so what are the symptoms of this portal hypertension the first and the major symptom would be the gastrointestinal bleeding so when the bleeding occurs in the gastrointestinal system the stools will be black and tarry tar colored stools okay uh, then what are the other conditions we have splenomegaly or enlargement of the spleen we have ascites 
which is uh, the accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity. Uh, we also have esophageal varices and hemorrhoids. We also have some other related symptoms like reduced platelet count, RBC and WBC. So sometimes the patient might be uh, confused or forgetful uh, because of the encephalopathy, uh, which is due to the uh, poor liver function. So what is the treatment of this portal hypertension? Uh, there is no direct treatment for this portal hypertension, but however, we can prevent the causes or we can manage the complications that are being caused by this portal hypertension. Like we can manage the portal, uh, sorry, esophageal varices, we can manage the hemorrhoids, right? So uh, we can also uh, ask the patient to undergo some lifestyle changes, like uh, we should ask them to restrict the intake of alcohol or some, uh, some drugs, okay? With this, we complete portal system. Thank you.